to the Daily Baptist Bread Devotional and Scripture Song Broadcast for this 8th day of February. And we are covering uh, these topics on little things in the Bible. And today is the last day for that uh, um, topic. Amen. So um, today's title is A Little Cake. <clears throat> and so before I get started, I'd like to greet you as always in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And hope and pray that he's your Lord and Savior today, because uh, if you don't have him as your Lord and Savior, well, you're not going to like where you're going to go and perish in your sin and all that if you don't trust him. And so, praise the Lord that uh, we have a Savior. Amen. <clears throat> all right. So, before we get started on the topic, we're going to sing today's scripture song, which is from Psalms 42, verses 1 through 2. So, if you have a copy of this scripture song, uh, songbook, or if you have your Bible handy, you can turn along and uh, turn to Psalm 42, verses 1 through 2, and we press play here, and we'll sing along with Brother Dean and Sister Patty, amen, and I like this song, this song is a good one, so I'll probably sing it a couple times, because it's a little faster song, amen, so let's get started, <clears throat> all right. Good. Psalms 42, oh, 1 and 2. As the, the heart panted after, after the water, water brooks, brooks, so, so panteth, panteth my soul after, after thee, thee, O God. God. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. God. When, when shall I come and appear before God? Before God? <clears throat> go. As the, the heart panteth after the water brooks, the water brooks, the water brooks, as the heart panteth. After the water brooks, so and my soul after thee, my God. My soul thirsted for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? As the heart pants at the water brooks, the water brooks, the water brooks, and the heart after the water brooks, so pent my soul after thee. Oh, God. Amen. Wow. <clears throat> he holds it a little longer than I can. <laughs> Amen. Psalms 1. All right, let's try that again. We'll go sing that again. It's a good one, so let's try that again. Amen. <clears throat> Psalms 42, 1 and 2. As the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul Amen, after thee, sister. O God. Praise the Lord. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? Here we go. Let's sing along again. As the heart panteth after the water brooks, the water brooks, the water brooks. As the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God. The water brooks, so pen my soul after thee. Oh God. Amen. <clears throat> All right. Psalms one forty three. All right, there we go. So do that a couple more times towards the end of the broadcast. But let me go ahead and put it back there to the yesterday's scripture song. Amen. Alright, so now it's time to get into the topic for today, titled A Little Cake for this 8th day of February, and the passage is from 1 Kings 17.13, and it says, And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me therefore a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son First Kings seventeen thirteen. Of course, our author today again is Brother Rick Gravely, and he is the pastor of Bible Baptist Church in Rossville, Georgia. So let me read you what he wrote here on this topic of a little cake. <clears throat> it says here, Elijah is not asking this widow to give him 
uh, the last morsel of food because he is selfish, the Lord spoke to him in verse 9 and assured him that he had spoken to this uh, widow and commanded her to care for him. The man of God is trying to help her exercise her faith in the word of God. Amen. Uh, he knows that if she will believe and obey God's word, then he will take care of her. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord for that. <clears throat> he asked her to make him a little cake first. He knows that once she gets all that she has out of her hands, then it will be in God's hands. Hmm. That's pretty good. So, he knows that once she gets all that she has out of her hands, then it will be in God's hands. Every time she turned it over to Elijah, the Lord gave her just enough for the day. Amen. So he gives us just enough for today when we hand it over to him. Amen. The greatest ingredient in her recipe was faith. These little cakes of faith prove that little is much when God is in it. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Little is much when God is in it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Weren't we just talking about that yesterday? That's a good uh, hymn right there. Little is much when God is in it. Uh, God kept his promise of provision because she believed his word. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not. Neither did the cruise of oil fail according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah, verses 15 and 16 of uh, 1 Kings 17. The Lord will do the same for you, if you will just trust him. Amen. So the Lord will do the same for you and for me, if we just trust him, if we will trust him. Amen. So let's learn to trust the Lord more. <clears throat> Amen. So that is the end of the devotional topic. Amen. So now it's time to grab the Victorious Christian Living book by Brother James Knox, and we're going to read another chapter from the Exemplary Tales from the Wilderness. Amen. <clears throat> so if you have a copy of this book, uh, the first edition will be page 147 in the book. So let me go ahead and read this to you. Exemplary Tales from the Wilderness, chapter 8. And Brother James says here, we come now to one of the weightiest verses in all of Scripture. In 1 Corinthians 10.13 we read, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But, I like those buts in the Bible, but God, amen, but God is faithful. Hallelujah. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation, also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. So, right with that temptation, he makes a way to escape. Amen. That we may be able to bear it. For our purposes, we will divide this verse into eight sections of tr uh, or truths, and examine them in sufficient detail, so that their truths might be learned, and proper application may be made to our daily lives. In the brief, briefest of summaries, consider the following. Number one, <clears throat> so consider, consider the following. Number one, temptation takes hold on each of us. So if you don't think it takes hold on you, <laughs> well, it takes hold on all of us. Mm. Yikes. Uh, number two, being tempted and the nature of temptation is not unique, but common to everyone. Three, God alone is true. That's right, God alone is true. Four, he does not permit us to face a sin we cannot refuse. Five, therefore, we, uh, when we do not refuse, it was a choice on our part. So you can't blame God when you fall into that temptation, because it was a choice on our part. Mm. Six, with every temptation is a way of escape. Hallelujah. Seven, this way is only available at the time the temptation takes hold. 8. We are able to bear whatever God allows to be set before us. Mm, that's good. Praise the Lord for that. So we're able to bear whatever God allows to be set before us. 
First, the bad news. We will all be tempted. All means all. So the bad news first is we will all be tempted. Then the good news. It will not be more than we can take. Next, more bad news. This means that whenever we sin, we did not have to, but showed, but chose to. Mm. Yep, <clears throat> so true. Uh, th uh, then, more good news. There is always a way out if we desire to take it. Amen. Always a way out if we desire to take it. So, we begin with, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. Temptation is defined as enticement by evil arguments, uh, by flattery, or by the offer of some real or apparent good. Consider the way in which our race fell. So consider the way in which our race fell. The serpent enticed the woman, arguing that the forbidden fruit was desirable. Uh, he then flattered her, convincing her that she deserved what had been withheld from her. Mm. Then he suggested she could become as gods. Uh, temptation is also said to be uh, solicitation of the passions, enticements to evil pro proceeding from the prospect of pleasure or advantage. Think of the serpent's appeals to Christ in the wilderness. The devil showed Jesus' kingdoms to be acquired, offered food to a hungry man, and suggested a way to gain the adoration of men, uh, bread for a fasting man, power for a lowly, lowly man, and a claim for a despised man. Those are certainly appealing. Yeah. <clears throat> In the case of the first Adam, and that of the last Adam, the payment required to attain the thing offered in the temptation was to submit to the rule of the devil. So it is with every temptation. <clears throat> yeah. All right, continuing on. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. From this statement, we gather that temptation is a part of every life. Uh, that is, no one will live without being continually presented with opportunities to reject the love of God in order to give the devil momentary reign. Even the Lord Jesus was tempted. We are also made to understand that sin's allure will not be packaged in a thousand different ways, but will be set forth in a common and ordinary or predictable way. Mm. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. First John 2.16 The idea that the world or the devil is going to cook up some special sort of enticement for each uh, individual gives man far too much credit. <clears throat> the same old tricks that have worked in every life since the human race staggered out of the garden continue to get the job done. That's right, the devil doesn't tempt us with anything new. It's always the same old thing because he knows exactly what we struggle with and what we get tempted with. So he's not going to throw anything new at us. He's going to keep tempting us with the same old things. So... And when we don't learn from them, well, shame on us. Yikes. And I'm speaking to myself, too. So, preaching to myself, if nobody else is listening, preaching to myself. Amen. The flesh still wages war against the spirit and desires anything that would be displeasing to the Lord and hurtful to the man. The eyes seem unable to focus on all the blessings bestowed and constantly scan the horizon for some new folly or object of inordinate desire. The most useless individual is beset with pride. Those who have accomplished nothing in their life take offense when they are told they need Jesus. No matter how evident it may be that someone is in dire straits, their inward thoughts or their inward thought is that some way Somehow, they deserve more respect, recognition, money, benefits, etc. Flesh, eyes, pride. Oh, these ever-present foes seek to work our ruin. Yeah. 
<laughs> they sure do. <clears throat> and he concludes here, not only does temptation come in common forms, but it comes in common to each of us, the first man and woman in a garden of good and the Lord of glory in a wilderness were tried uh, in this way. The little girl and the aged woman, the rich and the poor, everyone you see is tempted. We shall not escape this reality until we are present with the Lord. That's right. Uh, so we won't escape this uh, reality until we are present with the Lord. We must accept that temptation is a part of daily, live, of daily life throughout the course of our days and learn the means whereby to overcome when we are put to the test. God is not going to keep us from being tempted. He will show us the way to or the way of victory. So he won't keep us from being tempted, but he will show us the way of victory. Hallelujah. So <clears throat> amen for that. And that is the end of chapter 8. So let's take heed to that and know that we can't ex uh, that we can't escape temptation when it is presented to us. Amen. And so it's it becomes a choice if we don't, and so you can't blame God once you fall into it, because it was your own choice to go into it, and it's my own choice if I go into it, so I uh, just got to make sure that we flee from it, amen, when it's uh, presented to us, so hallelujah. <clears throat> All right, so now it's time to sing the scripture songs again. We'll do yesterday's, and then we'll sing today's a couple more times to get it down, so um, let me see where we're at. So yesterday this was from Jonah 2.7. So if you are ready, we'll sing yesterday's and when we'll sing today's a couple times and then we'll conclude it. Amen. Jonah 2.7. When my, my soul, soul fainted within me, me, I remembered the Lord, and, and my, my prayer, prayer came in, in unto me, thee, in into thy thine holy temple. temple. Amen. When my soul this one a lot. Amen. Psalms 42, 1 and 2. One of my favorites. As the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? Alright, do it again. Sing it out. As, As the, the heart panteth after the water brooks, the water brooks, the water brooks, as the heart panteth after the water brooks, so pet my soul after thee, O oh God. My soul thirsted for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? At the heart after the water brooks, the water brooks, the water brooks, and the heart after the water brooks, so pet my soul after thee. Oh, God. Amen. 
Amen. <clears throat> All right, let's try that one more time. Amen. It's a good song. I like it. Psalms 42, Praise 1 and 2. As the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? Amen. All right, let's sing it one more time. As the heart panteth after the water brooks, the water brooks, water brooks, as the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after the O God. My soul thirsted for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? As the heart and the water brooks, so pen my soul like a deep. Oh, God. Amen. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> All right. Well, that about ended for today's broadcast. Praise the Lord. And uh, I really like that scripture song. It's one of my favorites. Amen. <laughs> so, praise the Lord. And, uh, all right, so let me give you tomorrow's scripture song and then the devotional topic for tomorrow. So tomorrow will be the ninth, and the uh, um, scripture song will be from Psalms 143, verses 8 through 9. And it says, uh, Cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning, for in thee do I trust. Cause me to know the way wherein I should walk, for I lift up my soul unto thee. Deliver me, O Lord, from mine enemies. I flee unto thee to hide to hide me. Amen. So that would be tomorrow's scripture song. And then tomorrow's topic, we're uh, moving into a new topic tomorrow. <clears throat> and it's titled, J.L. and a Nail. Hmm, J.L. and a Nail. And the passage is from Judges 4, verses 21. Amen. And so, and then the author of tomorrow will be Brother Tim Green from Revival in Our Times, Day Heights, Ohio. So, Hope you'll come back tomorrow to find out about this topic on jail and a nail. <clears throat> Amen. And then, of course, we'll cover another uh, chapter from Exemplary Tales from the Wilderness, uh, Chapter 9, from the Victorious Christian Living Book. And it's uh, right here. This is what it looks like. I know it's backwards on the screen, but that's the cover of it. And it was uh, written by Brother James W. Knox. Amen. You can find it on the church website at www dot jameswnox dot com uh, dot org not dot com dot org and go to the church website store amen and then of course uh the scripture songs are available all day long and you can download them or order the cds and uh let me give you that website at www dot daily scripture songs dot com and of course if anybody's interested in ordering a box of these baptist bread devotionals they're good little devotionals um <clears throat> They send you throughout the year, and this one is uh, from January and February, so i um, not sure which one you'll get. If you order now, you'll probably get the ones for the next two months, which will be March and April. So if you order now, it's uh, www.timgreenministries.com is the website address for that, and I believe he's got some other books on there um, from other authors, and I think uh, a few from himself. I think he's written a few books, so uh, go check those out. Amen. So... All right, well, thanks for watching, amen, and uh, hope to see you, Lord willing, tomorrow. So until next time, may the Lord richly bless you, and hope you all have a great and wonderful day, amen. Praise the Lord. All right, Brother Scott signing off, so bye-bye for now, and thank you again for tuning in, amen.